So if you're building your first PC, hold up. Here are five mistakes I made when building my first PC. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Tolu and here's my PC. So I built this around two to three years ago and I made a bunch of mistakes and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. So first of all, let's talk a bit about the specs. So this is the Lian Li O11 Mini and inside it is the Asus Z270A motherboard, a very old motherboard, i7-7700K CPU. We've got the Be Quiet 280mm AIO. And for the GPU, we have the MSI GTX 1070, which I have overclocked. We've got 24 gigabytes of RAM, which is really weird, I know, but let me go, please. And yeah, I think that's about it for the important stuff. So I spent around five to 600 pounds on this entire PC. I did a full video talking about my entire setup, which you guys can check out over here. But here is the PC. So let's talk about all the dumb mistakes I made. So starting off at mistake number one, make sure that your motherboard actually fits your chassis. I know this is pretty generic advice, but there's a reason why it's been said a lot of times. My old case could not actually fit to my Z270A motherboard. And for some reason, I didn't check or read the instruction manual. I just got the motherboard and hoped it would fit in the case, which it clearly didn't. I'm the type of guy to get an instruction manual and just chuck it across the room because I don't want to read it but make sure you guys actually read it. It has a lot of good info in there and it will save you a lot of time and money because who wants to spend more money to return something or buy something new? That's just a waste of time. So make sure that your motherboard actually fits your case. So before we get onto mistake number two, if you guys are liking the video so far, hit the like button to let me know that you guys are enjoying this type of content. Onto mistake number two. Once again, it's about the chassis. Make sure that your power supply fits the chassis. Now this is a bit weird because until around three years ago, I did not know that different power supply sizes actually existed. The tech reviewer slash PC builder didn't know that different power supply sizes existed. I know, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Yeah, this case does not fit ATX power supplies, which is what I currently have. So you're probably asking Tolu, how on earth does your power supply fit this case if it doesn't accept ATX PSUs? And it doesn't basically is the answer. My power supply is hanging off the back of my PC. So I can't put the back plate on because the power supply doesn't fit inside the chassis. It actually goes outside, which is a massive, massive issue I have with this case. Well, it's kind of my fault. I didn't once again read the instruction manuals. You guys should read the instruction manuals. Yeah, it's caused some cables to fall out and it makes cable management so much harder. Dust gets into your PC more often. It's just really bad. I plan on upgrading this whole PC within the next few months. So don't worry guys, it will all be sorted. But yeah, make sure you guys read the instruction manuals. It will tell you what power supplies fit in your case, how wide your power supply has got to be and so on. So you don't have to clean your PC every two weeks because so much dust gets into it. So on to mistake number three. If you guys are going to forget absolutely everything about this video, please remember this one thing. When you're building your PC, keep your screws in a safe place, I beg you. So when I was building my PC, Be Quiet sent out this AIO for review purposes. And upon opening the AIO, I got the bags full of screws and I literally put it everywhere. I didn't keep it in a safe spot. I just went all across my workspace and I had to spend hours trying to find each screw because I needed every one of them and I couldn't find the extra bag of screws that came with it. So please guys, keep all the screws you get, every single one of them in a safe space. It saves you hours and I mean hours of blood, sweat and tears. Don't be like me, keep it somewhere safe. I'm emphasizing this so much because it seems so mundane and so easy but it saves you so much time. Please keep your screws in a safe place. Speaking of screws, I don't know if these fans are actually, yeah, it seems I didn't learn from my mistakes. My fan, I must have lost the screw for that as well. So one of the fans aren't actually screwed on properly, but I've changed. So my next PC is gonna be fully screwed in and everything, don't worry about it. Yeah, on to mistake number four. And this is for people who are building with bigger and newer graphics card. So if you're getting the 4090, for example, I would strongly advise getting a GPU holder or the GPU bracket because the low to mid range motherboards will probably not support that weight. And there's a high chance that your GPU might just snap off along with the PCIe connector. So please don't waste a month's worth of rent because you don't want to get a $15 GPU holder. My first PC had the 1060 on a ITX, I'm not too sure, motherboard. 
and the GPU was sagging quite a bit. I never actually got that GPU holder. So once again, guys, don't be like me. Get the $10 GPU. It's probably like five to 10 pounds. Just spend the 10 to $15 on the holder and it'll save you a lot of anxiety and paranoia. Now we are onto the last mistake I made when I was building my first PC. And that is checking that your case will fit your AIO. Now, I don't mean if your case will fit a 240 millimeter AIO or 280 or 360. Most cases have that clearly shown on the second slide. I'm talking about the width of your AIO. Now this AIO didn't fit in my previous case. It was simply too wide when I mounted it under top, which caused me a lot of issues. I tried to fit it in as best I could, but I couldn't screw anything in and it was just falling down. So make sure you guys check and read the instruction. I think I'm just gonna name this read the instruction manual, but read the instruction manual I know. And it should show you the space between the top of the motherboard should be your the CPU socket and the top of the case. And it will make your PC building experience so much easier because you don't have to struggle trying to loop cables in and trying to plug in that CPU connector, which is super difficult regardless of what AIO, but it'll just make it a little bit easier for you. So yeah, that wraps up the video. If you guys are building your first PC, just don't stress. There are a lot of good resources out there to help you out. And yeah, if you guys took something from this video, please let me know in the comments and hit the subscribe button to show support to the channel. So that's it from me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.